Welcome, welcome. I'm Yu Zheng. I am the face behind Thirsty for Art, and we're doing on the five things that I did to break the income ceiling and gain a lot of freedom um, in my non-clinical art therapy business. So there are things that I did that led me to have a successful online art therapy business, which ultimately gave me, you know, a lot of more income than before, as well as way more time and location freedom than before. So you guys will learn the five things that I did. Um, and I know there are some of you guys who are really, really new to this community, the CFR community, or the maybe art therapy community or our facilitator community. And um, you don't know me um, that much, right? You maybe just you've found me right now or today even. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of I like background. Um, and that will actually feed into the things that we are talking about today, the five things that I did, because yeah, it all connects, it all connects. <laughs> so, okay. So if you don't know me, um, again, my name is Yu Jung Sun, and I am an art therapist. I'm registered art therapist in the US. And so how it started, how my career and business started was I actually was on the clinical art therapist path. So I kind of went through the traditional art therapist path where I studied studio art in my bachelor for my bachelor's as well as psychology. I mean, I didn't need to study psychology per se, but I, I was really interested in human psychology, right? So I kind of double majored and I went straight into art therapy masters. Um, uh, I went to school in New York and got my master's there. And then, and then I started working in New York. I, I really wanted to stay in New York for a long while and just, you know, right, be make that place as my base ground camp, base camp, and just yeah, you know, build my career from there. Right? I was kind of, I had a, this faint idea of like, oh, one day I want to, you know, have an, a private practice, right, a business of my own where I see my own clients. Uh, but of course, I knew that I had to like be employed. I felt like I had to be employed in the beginning um, to gain my license and to gain my certification and everything like that, right? Um, and so I walked the clinical art therapist path and, you know, took a lot of different jobs. And the one, one thing I realized was that, you know, clinical path, that involved many different things that I did not expect, <laughs> right, as an art therapist. I did not expect that low of a pay. I did not expect uh, that I would be doing many different types of jobs that are not really art therapy. Um, I did not expect to feel so isolated as well. Um, and of and a little bit like very competitive as well because New York was just a small place with many, many art therapists. Um, and yeah, and I think, and also the, the job opportunities was just not there as a, it's not the amount that I really expected. So along with that, there were a lot of difficulties in getting my license and really doing the actual clinical work that I wanted to do. Uh, but things happened and I went through some burnout, you know, I don't want to really say as usual, but, <laughs> but it's kind of very common. I went through some burnout and I realized that I cannot work you know, 40 hours a week, and I cannot do that anymore. And, you know, nine to five is not really for me. And I actually started a YouTube channel. Um, uh, when I moved out of New York, I started a new YouTube channel, um, just because I had this like, burning passion within me, just I had this itch, it has been itching for a long time, right? actually several years before I even started the YouTube channel, I just had an itch that I wanted to do something online. I wanted to just kind of spread the idea of art therapy online, but I didn't see a lot of people do that. Uh, and so I was like, hmm, I wish I could just like, maybe even meet people online and talk about art therapy or even do art therapy online. That was just kind of my fantasy, you know? Um, and I don't know if you ever had that kind of thought before too, like, oh, if, what if I could see someone online? Because I myself, I mean, I, I was born in the US, I am Korean American. And for me, I really had the idea that I could really help people who spoke Korean, right? Who spoke 
who were maybe in the US, but spoke Korean or maybe in Korea, right? You know, so like if I could work like across state lines, that would be amazing. I had this kind of fantasy, but yeah. So I started my YouTube channel just because I had this passion to spread art therapy. And then from there, his, his, the rest is history. You know, from the YouTube channel, I was able to actually build a business. And this actually feeds into the first point that I wanted to make. The first thing that I did to break the income ceiling and gain freedom in my business, online non-clinical RGB business, is actually building an online authority. All right, so that's what I did. When I built my YouTube channel, um, you know, I had this passion for like, spreading art therapy ideas, introducing art therapy to people online to many different countries, in many different countries, right? And that actually led me to naturally create what is called an online authority, right? This, this presence you have online, right? Presence online where people recognize you as authority in your niche, in your topic. So like, for example, for art therapists, it would be like, you're being known as an as the art therapist, right? You're being known as the art facilitator or the creative coach or similar, right? And so that was the first thing that I did. <laughs> um, creating that presence and creating some a uh, sort of an audience, a community, I was I would like to say, um, that really loves following you, loves hearing from you. And so that's how. I kind of naturally stumbled upon online authority and I I realized and I learned that with the online authority is like the one of the first things that someone can work on when they're thinking about uh, build, starting a business. That's one of the first things, right? Um, you can jump into, right? Any business needs to have clients, right? Any business needs to have a clientele. But when you have an online authority, when you have an online presence, where people can kind of come to you and ask you or people can learn from you or get tips from you, right? Or just follow you. Then it's so much easier for you, for people, the right people, your clients, uh, to find you and come to you for your services, right? And so having that presence, having that authority is super important. So let me know if that has made sense for you guys till now. Because this is like very, very crucial if you are to have an online business, right? Online art therapy business. Um, so online art therapy is the number one thing that I kind of stumbled upon as I started my YouTube. Uh, YouTube became my kind of authority building medium or tool. <laughs> but it, for everybody else, it could be something different. It could be Instagram. It could be something, another social media app, right? Um, so that's number one. Number two is actually something people I, I think miss a lot. Something that I did that I think really helped me to build a successful business is self-care. Uh, maybe you might have not expected this at all. Um, but as I said before, like I was burnt out physically, emotionally before in my clinical art therapy career. So for me, when I built my business, I was like, I need to put health as my priority. It is the reason that I am building this business because I want my work to work around my health and myself, right? Not the other way around, right? And so I didn't want to be in a setting where my self-care is the last thing on the list, right? Of important things, right? Of list of priorities, whatever, right? I wanted self-care to be the number one, right? To be the priority. And so that's why I intentionally put self-care as one of the things that I really prioritized uh, as I was building my business, right? Which means like having breaks during my workday, making art, right, to just tap into myself and also to relax, right, reading, right, um, also another way of self-care, and I will be elaborating on this, is like connecting with other people, uh, spending time outside for me especially, that's huge, uh, spending time with family relationships, so that was so, so important, um, and I think that I could build my business where my business gave me lots of freedom because of this reason, because I put self-care as a priority. I know 
that even if you become self-employed, your self-care can be put out in the the last thing on your list, right? And I know a lot of people, business owners who, who do that, right? And they just burn out just the same as they were before in the nine to five, right? And so I think it's super important to keep this in mind, like self-care and make sure that is a priority when we are building our business. I think it gives us a lot of clarity, first of all, it gives us a lot of like opportunity to make decisions from a place of, calmness and right like clarity um and using our wisdom right <laughs> instead of like reacting right reacting to overwhelm or whatever right reacting to pressure and things like that so self-care number one for sure i bet there are many others who feel that way too so self-care leading us to business right and so it's the same we have to keep that in mind as we're building the business too just so that we do not get into that the hamster wheel again, right? Hamster wheel of just overwhelm and burnout and doing too much, right? So important, important, especially if we want to gain that freedom through our business, right? <laughs> All right, you guys ready for number three? Um, number three is kind of hinted, but it's actually community. So, wow, this is big because... I never really thought about it that much, but I realized when I started my business, I definitely need this. <laughs> I definitely need this community. So that's one of the things that I did to build my business in a successful way. Community, super important. I think, I mean, I cannot have done this without community, honestly. I mean, I don't think anyone can do this business building uh, alone. Yeah, right. Like I always try to have community, right? Which means just people around me who support me with my business, right? Yeah, I, I really think that without the support from other people, without the support from my personal community, I wouldn't have been able to have this kind of business and sustain this too, right? Um, so when I say like community, that could mean like having mentors uh, who can talk to you about business, right? can give you advice or support or having like groups of colleagues or maybe even other art therapists or facilitators who are in the same path or who kind of share your same vision or who will maybe who just um that is what i mean by community and that is like so 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 good for your soul and what is good for your soul always feeds back into the business it helps your business right <laughs> that's why self-care works that's why community works um yeah i really think that we're not meant to do this thing alone this thing meaning you know pursuing our passion and building this kind of legacy and business right community is what helps you sustain your momentum even after you get started and make things go faster too. Because what I realized was like, if I have a technical question, maybe it's like a very quick question that could be answered quickly, a uh, simple question. Asking my community, right, is so much faster in getting the solution than me trying to search for the answer alone, online or in person, whatever, right? Like, it's just so much harder and time consuming for me to do that alone when I could just ask my mentor or I could just ask, you know, someone in my community about a technical thing or whatever it is in my business that I need help on um, so much faster. Right. And especially because if someone or someone else has like experience, right. Experience in building an online art business, then they could, really use their wisdom to inform you of what they, what the mistakes they've made or and how to avoid that, how to make the best decision going forward, right? Um, so community, I think, is like the leverage, the best leverage you can have in really speeding up the growth of your business, I think, yeah. Um, and so let's go to the fourth thing. And that is maybe we're getting into more like the, uh, left brain now, <laughs> but that is the business plan. So business plan, very, very important. Am I pointing to the right thing? <laughs> business plan. Um, so I started my business uh, by focusing on the online authority part, as I said before, like 
I really focus on the YouTube, right? Building that audience online, building that presence online, but which was really great, right? And I was successful. But once I started it, I realized that I need to actually have a plan to keep a business going. It's not just about building an audience. It's not because if you have an audience, that's great. However, if you don't have the kind of business plan to bring in clients, see clients, right, and grow your business, then, you know, you don't have much if you don't have that business plan, right? And so I realized that, yeah, I need to get this plan going so that I can have like this blueprint or structure where I know how to keep clients coming, how to keep growing my community and authority and actually be able to earn well as well as work less, because that was my thing, because I didn't want to work for the hours, right? And so that was my kind of vision and goal, um, that freedom in terms of work time. And so, yeah, so having, so I came up with a business plan and that plan really gave me a clearer idea about who my clients are, which helped me define my marketing plan, how to get the clients and what my offer is. Um, so my plan kind of really clarified those things in my business, which are super important, right? It, um, and there is a sense of confidence that you get when you clearly know how your business works, when you clearly know how to use the online authority to market and bring in clients and again, more clients or Business plan is definitely like the how, right? And knowing the how is, it gives you confidence for sure about, you can really plan ahead and have this future laid out, right? And expect, you can kind of have this expectation of what kind of income you can have, right? So business plan is the fourth thing that I did. And the last thing I did is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle. When you are when you have a business, I think this is, the last piece of the puzzle that really like completes it and makes it a successful business. And so that is actually uh, technical and legal setup. So what I mean by that is we have an online, we're talking about online non-clinical business, right? And so to make a online and non-clinical business, successful, we got to make sure the technical setup is smooth, right? Um, <laughs> you know, if not, then the way that we deliver our service, the quality of the service will go down for sure, right? Because what we do is online. So we got to make sure it's delivered smoothly online. So that means making sure the technical structure is there, um, you know, right? So technical part of your business is solid, right? So that's what I mean by technical setup. It just ensures that our clients' experience with our business is a positive one. And that's important because when a client has a positive experience, they'll come back for us, right? <laughs> so um, technical setup, I think in that way is very important. Uh, and the other part I wanted to mention was like the legal setup that I did. So the legal setup, um, I, I mean, I get a lot of questions about this and I was really afraid of this as well when I created, before I created my online non-clinical business, we're talking about non-clinical business. I was so afraid before I started that doing non-clinical work would be like wrong or it's it's something that I shouldn't do, right? Because of yada yada reason and because uh, I could get trouble legally, right? That was one of my fears that I had before I started my business. And let me know if you also have that fear um, in the comments. But yeah, I think that was one of the scary parts of starting a business. But I actually think once I started my business, I figured out that, oh, the legal setup doesn't have to be scary. The legal setup doesn't have to be complicated. Um, as long as you have some things in place that make sure that you draw the line between what is clinical versus non-clinical, then you're okay. You're going to be okay. Um, and um, you don't have to worry that much uh, as, you know, as long as you have some things in place within your business, right? Some 
paperwork things, right? I mean, they're not, and, and they're not complicated either. So I feel like a lot of you might be like worried or maybe um, just kind of unsure about the legal setup of a business. However, I want to assure you that it's not complicated. It's not rocket science. You just need to put some things in place within your business that make sure that your client understands that this is not a clinical service and that's all you really have to do essentially um that you're not a psychotherapist that's that's kind of the thing that you have to you know be clear on with your clients and so there are several ways that you can put that boundary in place and make that clear right but we're going to go in depth about that in our art therapist boss workshop so um you you know you can ask questions in there as well but as far as what I did for my technical and legal setup, that was the thing. I just made sure um, some of my some parts of my business were, you know, it was clear that it was not clinical, right? And also my delivery of service was smooth. <laughs> so having the right technical setup, you know, for example, like booking process. I'm gonna I made sure that that was set up pretty good. Uh, so that we didn't have any trouble with our clients. And um, yeah, so those are the five things that I did. I think they are all pretty important, right? The, so to give you a little overview, uh, there are five things that I did for my online non-clinical art therapy business that I think really made it a success and that gave me um, the opportunity to break my income ceiling and gain a lot of freedom. And those are number one, online authority. I started in a particular order though. <laughs> um, number two, self-care. So important that we often forget. Uh, we have to take care of ourselves in order to build our business. Um, number three, community, because you can really fast track your success when you have a community for sure. And also not to just mention like, you feel way less isolated, right? Uh, and the fourth thing is business plan. So you know how you get your business, you know how your business is going to be um, sustainable, right? And the fifth one is the technical and legal setup. So it's just kind of like the last piece of the puzzle to make sure that your business is going to run okay and it's going to be protected. So those are my five things. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful and some of the things were surprising. Let me know too. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.